Hey everybody, this is Stitch1993 back again with another classic movie where I talk about movies that are most likely classics but probably are still a bit underrated or under the radar for a lot of people that I just want to put a spotlight on. And today we're talking about The Valley of Guanji. This is a Ray Harryhausen produced film and animated by Ray Harryhausen that came out during the summer of 1969. Uh, I'll go over a little bit about the people behind the scenes and then I'll talk about the plot of the movie. Uh, now it is directed by Jim O'Connelly which uh, when looking up he was uh, doing a lot of more mostly associate producer credits and production manager credits. This is one of the few actual movies he uh, actually directed fully. It was written by three people William Bast, Julian Moore, and Willis O'Brien. Uh, William Bast was uh, mostly known for uh, television movies and television writing. He wrote for multiple episodes on such classic television shows as Combat, Perry Mason, and the original The Outer Limits. Uh, Willis H. O'Brien seems to be one that uh, collabed with Ray Harryhausen a lot as he helped on feature films such as King Kong, Son of Kong, and uh, Mighty Joe Young, which he won an Academy Award for. It, the film, of course, as I said, was produced by Ray Harryhausen, but also with Charles Schneer. Now, Charles and Ray worked on multiple films together. Charles basically produced almost every single one of Ray Harryhausen's films, everything from uh, starting in 1955 with It Came From Beneath the Sea, and this film all the way up through Ray's last giant feature film, Clash of the Titans in 1981. I really enjoy this idea of uh, dinosaurs versus cowboys and this honestly is like the only movie I can think of where those two genres mix. So the movie starts off with a group coming upon uh, Miguel. We all, this is the only time we ever see Miguel. He's carrying a cloth sack with a questionable creature inside. Uh, old lady, who we find out later is, a, is supposed to be like a witch, advises the man to leave the creature as is cursed and if brought to their land, the entire land will be cursed. Uh, the title sequence then starts showing off many wonderful sketches, all hinting at what we will later see in the film. We are then told this film takes place near south of the Rio Grande, near the turn of the century. A Wild West show parades into town with some questionable casting choices. A businessman by the name of Tuck Kirby is in search of an arena, and Lopi, a young boy, helps him find the arena. At the arena, we watch the Wild West show play out. Tuck finds the arena, but is not welcome there, as we, the audience, find out that Tuck is only there for the love interest, TJ. But Tuck is not known as a stand-up guy and is warned to stay away from her. Tuck mis dismisses the showrunner's scolding and watches TJ do her act. This distracts her, but she successfully completes her act, where we also get our first case of the Dynamation to show said feet. Now, Dynamation is the title of what Ray Harryhausen called his animation. This is, of course, stop-motion animation, but he called it dy Dynamation, which is a mixture of the words stop-motion and dynamic. And this is because when he animated them, he tried to mesh the live action with the animation in the same scenes to make it more realistic. Uh, a lot of films during this time and before and after, if they were using creature effects such as this, they more than likely try to do the, all the animation on separate scenes and you wouldn't see the actual actors interact with the creatures. Of course, this is before we had stuff like green screen and the digital effects that we have now. So it was a lot harder to uh, mesh those two and make it look believable. But uh, Ray Harryhausen was one of the very few people that was able to successfully do it, in my opinion, and thus the reason it's called Dynamation. Uh, Tuck tries to swoon TJ as well as try to buy her horse as Buffalo Bill wants it for his show. Uh, now for younger viewers that don't know who Buffalo Bill is, he is a real life person that is kind of the beginning to those big top shows, kind of like the Barnum and Bailey, uh, Greatest Show on Earth type of people. If you've ever seen the musical Annie Get Your Gun, he is the uh, show that Annie 
joins up with. It's the Buffalo Bill Show. It's a Wild West show that was very popular during that time in the, of the world. As Tuck and Lopi head back into town, they come across a Professor Gromit, a paleontologist that Lopi knows of. The Professor's mule has run away. A Doc and Lopi offer to take Professor back to his tent where his mule has already arrived. Back at his tent, the Professor discusses with Tuck and Lopi his search for the missing link and shows a fossil he believes is a tibia of a humanoid of some sort. Back at the arena, TJ and Carlos discuss a secret new act, but soon Tuck shows back up, seeing if TJ has changed her mind about selling her horse. Lopi decides to try being a matador, and Tuck and Carlos swoop in to save him. This somehow causes TJ and Tuck to fall back in love with each other. Uh, TJ also decides to sell her horse, and she and Carlos have a new act. That night, TJ introduced her new act, El Diablo, a miniature horse animated entirely in Dynamation. This was the creature that was in the burlap bag at the beginning of the film. The act is El Diablo dancing on the top of a regular sized horse's back. Uh, Tuck shows El Diablo to the Professor Gromit, and Gromit advises this is actually a creature from approximately 50 million years ago, and it's probably one of the greatest scientific discoveries of the century. Tuck starts getting dollar signs in his head of selling something like this to Barnum Bailey or Buffalo Bill. Tuck and Gromit try to get Carlos to show where they found the horse, but Carlos won't tell them anything, uh, but does let it slip out that his group is from a camp. Once Carlos leaves, Tuck devises that Lopi could find the camp, which they do. Tuck and Gromit ask the witch about the location. She mentions a valley that is cursed but won't give away its exact location. The witch says that if she had the horse, though, she would return it to the valley. The next morning, Tuck finds out Lopi and the professor are going on a journey that night, and Tuck puts two to two together pretty quickly that the witch and her group will steal the horse and take it back to the valley, and that Grandma and Lopi will follow them back to the valley. TJ, Carlos, and the showrunner then follow Tuck as they think he's the one that stole El Diablo. Tuck finds the professor and Lopi first, and they gang up to continue following the witch. The witch and her gang are able to successfully release the small horse. Tuck and the professor stop hunting for the night, but are soon spooked by a creature. We only get a quick glimpse, but it appears to be a pterodactyl. The next morning, they meet up with TJ and her group, and together they find the small horse. The next scene is a fun Wild West chase scene of everyone chasing the small horse. The horse is animated very lively and comes off very cute and almost lifelike. They all end up following it into a large cave that opens up into the Forbidden Valley. This is when the film gets particularly interesting from here on out. First, the gang is attacked by a pterodactyl, and Lopi is captured. Though too heavy to carry for long, Lopi is rescued and the pterodactyl slain. The shots between the animated pterodactyl and the animatronic one seem very seamless. Uh, the gang doesn't have much time to think about their need when they come across another smaller dinosaur and decide to try to capture it for their show. But that idea is soon tarnished by a T-Rex ambushing them. Cowboys and dinosaurs, um, such a unique combination that plays out so fun and cheesy. They try to shoot the dinosaurs, but the bullets appear to not affect the creatures. The rest of the gang decide to leave, but the professor attempts to stay. When they're treated to the sights of more dinosaurs as they all try to escape the valley. Then we get an enticing scene of a triceratops type of creature and T-Rex in the same scene along with the deceased pterodactyl. Tuck, TJ, and the rest find a larger back entrance into the valley and decide to camp for the night. They discover they brought the wrong ammo and they have been shooting blanks. They also decide to build traps as well. TJ advises Tuck that she's planning on selling the whole show, not just the horse. Tuck advises he should sell out as well and buy a ranch and they both settle down. A love scene begins to play out, but the trap is heard being set off. Of course, it's only the professor. The next morning, while Tuck is getting water, the T-Rex spots him and chases all of them back to the cave. We watch a pretty decent and seamless fight scene between the cowboys and the dinosaurs play out. Again, keep in mind this was way before green screen and the digital effects, so the dinosaur being superimposed into these shots is quite a feat. Eventually, they capture the T-Rex, but the success is short-lived as the Triceratops creature is back distracting the cowboys. The T-Rex and the tri Triceratops then battle it out. The cowboys can do nothing but watch in horror. Carlos tries to help in the battle by stabbing a spear into the Triceratops side. Uh, fire breaks out, trapping the cowboys between the valley and the dinosaur who has just won over the Triceratops. Carlos is the first life lost in their escape. The T-Rex tries to escape through the smaller opening, but instead causes a landslide that knocks it out.
Seeing an opportunity, the cowboys wrangled the dinosaur and built a makeshift vehicle to transport him back to the arena. On their way back, they come across the witch, which warns them that they will all suffer unless they set the dinosaur free. The cowboys, of course, don't listen to her and continue on their trip. The witch calls the creature Guanji, and thus that is the name they call it for their show at the arena. The professor thinks the dinosaur shouldn't be used for a show and instead used for scientific research. Tuck and TJ then get into a tiff as now it's TJ that wants to tour while Tuck is still wanting to sell out and settle down. Tuck leaves distraught, but Lopi encourages TJ to go after Tuck. The witch and one of her helpers sneak into the show and release Guanji, unbeknownst to anyone else, which causes the dinosaur to wreak havoc on the arena. Though most survive, including TJ and Tuck, and since TJ did listen to Lopi and ran after Tuck, thus neither of them being near their arena. The dinosaur escapes his cage, and we see Guanji fighting off the show's elephant, killing the professor and wrecking the arena and the town. Then Tuck and a few of the other cowboys do make an attempt to kill the dinosaur, but not before additional townsfolk deaths occur. Everyone tries to escape through a church, but the dinosaur breaks his way in. Tuck locks him in the church, not knowing that TJ and Lopi are also stuck and are being chased by the dinosaur. While fighting the dinosaur, Tuck distracts it with an organ and a spear to the side of the creature's head. Eventually, the church is set on fire, allowing for Tuck, TJ, and Lopi to make a daring escape. The church crumbles to the ground, killing Guanji. The entire town and Wild West troop watch in awe as the beast burns away, thus ending the film on a rather bleak ending. Overall, this is probably one of Ray Harryhausen's more interesting flicks, one that should definitely be watched and appreciated, just as all of his other films have. I'm honestly surprised that the cowboy vs. dinosaur genre hasn't been further explored, especially with the visual effects technology we have now. I mean, we've got cowboys vs. aliens and aliens vs. dinosaurs. Why not another go at the Forbidden Valley? Let me know your thoughts on this film and the idea of cowboys vs. dinosaurs in general. Of course, remember to like and subscribe for future videos. And until next time, thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.